Here we are in the upstairs storage room, only remarkably different from the basement one in terms of size and location. Also, the basement storage room is more for crap, and this one seems to be more for junk. There's a lot of junk from my past up here. Like Darren, the resist drugs and violence lion. Kind of a non sequitur if you ask me. He tells you to resist drugs and violence by eviscerating gazelle. Although, do note the uncanny resemblance. Although I have to admit, his mane would be a great place to hide little bags of cocaine. That way I could hide my drugs and get in my fix of irony for the day. This is also where holidays go to hibernate. We got Christmas up here, Halloween, National Tickle Day, woo, and even Valentine's Day. You just never know what you'll find in the upstairs storage room here at the Griff House. You might even find a web show episode. Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's July 9, the 190th day of 2011, which means that 93 years ago today, an inbound local train collided with an outbound express, killing 101 and injuring 171 people, making it the deadliest rail accident in United States history. And there it is, viewers, one of the key disadvantages of trains. You just can't change lanes. Or rather, you can, but it requires a bit of a jolt from another large object. For example, another train. And that way, if you have two trains that need to change lanes, you can kill two birds and 101 people with one stone. Another disadvantage of trains? Poor braking ability. You see, this was before people determined that it might be a good idea for a hulking monstrosity going upwards of 60 miles per hour and carrying upwards of 200 people to be able to stop with only a modicum of time and effort, namely on a dime. But no, 1918 locomotives could not stop on a dime, or a quarter, or a pancake, or some even larger disc. No, if they were going at full speed, a train could take a whole mile to stop. Although, once again, the slow braking problem can, in theory, be solved by another train, which it was. Unfortunately, when you're braking that way, you're probably also braking. Vinyl record! That's a disc that's larger than a pancake. Too little, too late. Wikipedia attributes the great train wreck of 1918 to human error, presumably because humans did, in fact, invent the train, build the train, build the tracks, build the watchtowers, drive the trains, occupy the trains, and fail to invent, as previously stated, a proper braking mechanism. Yeah, I'd say humans had something to do with the error. I hate that word. Error. Error. I'll tell you the real error here, though. They used a telegraph to relay vital information. If the watchtower guy would have just called, or text messaged, or, you know, shot a quick email to the conductor's smartphone, or updated his Twitter and Facebook statuses, then the collision might not have even ever happened. Plus, his Facebook status might have gotten a few likes. It's always nice to get a few likes. It means people care. The tower watchman could have felt good about himself and prevented a tragedy, which would, in turn, make him feel good about himself, which he would post as a Facebook status, which would get likes, which would, in turn, make him feel good about himself. If only, if only. Of course, if the technology we have today existed in 1918, I hypothesize that none of us would exist. Because in making you feel good about yourself, technology allows you to be complacent with yourself. Allows you to disregard any motivation for self-improvement. And the Americans of 1918, poisoned with the technology of 2011, wouldn't be concerned about supporting the industry through the Roaring Twenties or the upcoming Great Depression. Instead, they'd be concerned with their Tumblr pages or increasing their gamer score. And the Treaty of Versailles would read, We pwned you, OMG, LOL. Of course, I am exaggerating, but while the crash was a bad thing, the things it taught us as a civilization most certainly aren't. Hey, butt kickers, keep sending me your outros. Check the description for instructions. Speaking of which... Until tomorrow, he's Griffin. He's still talking.